you know, we're, we're entering into very quickly, like not long, entering into a world where things like, let's say, CRISPR are rapidly going to become easy to access. What I mean by that is smaller and smaller groups with less and less capacity will be able to deliver highly asymmetric harm to the commons, to the world, to humanity. And unfortunately, COVID demonstrated precisely how incompetent we are at dealing with it, which is at the end of the day, quite a trivial perturbation. Um, so if there are in fact actually concentrated groups of bad guys out there, we're not going to be able to whack-a-mole them into non-existence. That's a blue church, um, what I call it, vanity. Right? The uh, war on terror modality that made so much hay in the first half of this century, not only can't possibly work in the future, but actually has uh, contra effects. It produces its own, it evolves the thing that will actually route around it. And we're not talking about um, you know, car bombs and the occasional um, gun attack. We're talking about the possibility of actually wiping out big chunks of the species or precipitating something that is catastrophic. Um, i.e. a spiral effect where the escalation can, begins out of control. This, by the way, I think is a bit of the opportunity that may have been missed in Jamie's book when he talks about rapture ideologies. Um, so we best engage with them now while we're relatively safe and try to find out what process might be able to be put in place that can take individuals who may actually be intrinsically moved into places of relative risk, like actually willing, willing to talk about violence, like much more interesting to, than somebody who's so cowed by a civilization that they can't actually... Uh, muster the energy to fight for something. The people who are actually willing to openly talk about violence simultaneously are potentially the most dangerous, but also potentially the most useful to engage with because there are many people who are willing to engage in violence who aren't going to talk about it. So what do we do? How do we actually learn how to achieve active peace? It's a real challenge. It's not going to be had by avoiding conversations or blocking people online.